Are you the friend who's always being asked for health advice? Now imagine turning that passion into a fulfilling career with our Become a Nutrition Coach program. Step into a world where your enthusiasm for wellness becomes the heart of your own thriving business. With me as your professor and guide and coach on our user-friendly digital platform, you can learn from anywhere at your very own pace. It's perfect for your busy life. Envision empowering others to live their healthiest lives all while growing a career you love. You're not just gaining a certification here, you're joining a community of like-minded professionals ready to support and celebrate with you every step of the way. So what are you waiting for? It's time to nourish your future and help change lives, including your own. Head over to nutritiouslife.com forward slash BNC for a free class and a sneak peek of the program. Your journey to becoming a nutrition coach begins now. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Living a Nutritious Life podcast. I'm your host, Carrie Glassman, and joining me today is the wonderful Dr. Haley Schaff. I met Haley at a weekend-long event, so we really got to spend some time together, and I was so impressed with her passion and her knowledge, but I was also impressed by her personal dedication to wellness. Also, she just has this wonderful, that's why I use that word to describe her, calm nature that I have no doubts her patients and her clinic reap the benefits of. So a little more about Haley. Haley is a leading expert in functional health, specializing in hormones, gut health, skin, and metabolism. She's also co-founder of Synergy Wellness Elixir, a new wellness beverage crafted from clean functional ingredients to fuel your vibe. Her full bio is in the show notes, so definitely check that out. There are so many things I could have talked to Haley about, but today we discuss the powerful connection between gut health and skin conditions like acne and eczema. So if you or anyone you know is suffering from any kind of skin condition, do not miss this episode. Keep listening. And as always, remember to rate, review, and share. Okay, let's do this. Welcome to Living a Nutritious Life. I'm Carrie Glassman, a celebrity registered dietitian nutritionist. Join me every Tuesday on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms as I bring in some heavy hitters to share the latest in nutrition and wellness science. We dive deep into food, sleep, stress, relationships, and so much more. Your weekly guide to a happier, healthier, more nutritious life. Dr. Haley Schaff. Hello, hello. Welcome to Living a Nutritious Life. I'm so excited, so excited to see you today and so excited to have the chance to chat with you and for my listeners to reap the amazing benefits of hearing from you. So yeah, welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I was so excited to chat and I was listening to your podcast a few weeks ago on the lymph one that you did. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, I was just, it was so nice to hear your voice. And then now obviously be able to chat with you. Amazing. Yes. And I I'm really excited to have this conversation with you. So let's, let's get into this first by, I want to introduce you to our audience by giving them a little bit of your background. Mm -hmm. We both have a master's in clinical nutrition, Mm -hmm. but you have a very, a different background as far as um, being a chiropractor Mm -hmm. and then other certifications. So I'd love to hear about your background, how you got into what you're doing and what you're doing now. Amazing. Yeah. So I had my traditional, uh, traditionally trained chiropractic. And I always knew that I was very like resonating with healing your body naturally, supporting your body naturally. I feel like chiropractic is kind of like one of the OG functional medicine kind of before it was, before it was functional medicine or before like coined at that term. And so that's kind of like what got me into this space. And then as I'm in school, I'm like, okay, I know I want to do nutrition. So I did my master's in nutrition along with that because I knew I really, I mean, I wanted to be able to cover all facets of health, right? And nutrition, I, as you know, is obviously a huge piece of that. And Wait, then, can I back up? Because I'm, I'm curious yeah. why you decided to be go to school f- to be a chiropractor. Like, where did that passion come from? So, being it is sport, really specific. It's yeah, it's super specific. And honestly, I had never been to one until I think I was a sophomore, or I was a freshman or sophomore in college, and I had hurt my back and 
it was like quite debilitating to the point like that I just couldn't play or um, that I was definitely taking a lot more time with my injury. And I was just like, when I had gotten home that summer, I was like, I need to just try something different. And when I walked in, when I booked a chiropractic appointment, I remember I was so hesitant. I was like, oh my gosh, they're going to hurt me or what are they even doing? Meanwhile, I wasn't getting any results doing anything otherwise. So, but then I walked in and I was just so, it was so refreshing to hear her perspective on like, she's asking about my lifestyle. She's asking about things that I'm doing. And then she was able to get me out of pain, obviously without any drugs or injections or anything like that, all just kind of natural stuff. And so That was so interesting to me because I was like, wow, this is totally my jam. I love all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I was always into kind of fitness and nutrition and doing things natural. We grew up that way. Like we were like the crunchy family, like our parents making us like these smoothies and things. And we're like, why can't we just eat the regular things like everybody else? But now I'm so thankful. Why can't we have some Kraft mac and cheese, mom? (laughs) We never had that growing up, which honestly now looking back, I'm like, wow, I'm so thankful for that. Um, but so I kind of always had that mindset of like, I know natural is better. I know natural makes me feel better. Right. And so then learning about that profession, I was like, okay, this is really, really interesting, especially being a college athlete. And then just really being into health and wellness, fitness, strength, all of those things. I just really gravitated towards that profession. Mm-hmm. And so I always thought I wanted to, because of my experience, I always thought I wanted to work with a sports team or work with athletes. Mm-hmm. And then as I got into school, I was like kind of learned that there's so much more that you can do with that profession and how you can like going through just like my own issues with hormones and like dialing in my nutrition. I was like, I can totally branch this into so many different areas. And Mm -hmm. so that's where then I got my master's. And then when I got out of school, I I got my master's in, uh, and then the chiropractic degree, then I got some additional certifications to do more in-depth things with functional medicine and lab testing. And because then like I graduated in 2019, the pandemic hit in 2020. And so I just had to get really creative on how I was going to be able to leverage what I was doing. And so the online space was huge because I could do nutrition from anywhere. I could do functional medicine and lab testing. I mean, kids drop shipped. So it's so easy. So I'm so, I think COVID really pushed me into kind of that whole space. I don't know if I would have been as full fledged into it if I didn't have the pandemic kind of forcing me to, to really be in the online space. But, um, I'm now so thankful for it because now I do a lot of mix. I do, I'd say 75% of my practice is all virtual, but I do stuff. I have a office right here in Canandaigua and the Finger Lakes that I do a lot, both in-person chiropractic and functional. And so I love it because I I've got a good mix of everything and, um, yeah, I, I absolutely love what I do. Yeah. And that's another reason I wanted you to share your background and where you're at is because as you know, Nutritious Life, we I have a program that certifies mm-hmm. people to be nutrition and wellness coaches. And a lot of a lot of the coaches and people probably listening here are just starting out, whether they're starting out and they've just, you know, finished school and, and they're in their twenties or they're making a career shift in their forties, fifties or sixties or whatever, mm-hmm. but they're still just starting out. And so I think you're really inspiring because you've done so much. You have such a depth of, you know, an education and you've really dove in to doing this and creating this business and being in this world, the chiropractic world, as well as the functional nutrition world, doing, looking at it though, from a perspective of being online, like you said, you use the pandemic as a little bit of a jump start there, yep. as well as having a more traditional type of practice. And so I think you're doing a really great job there. I think it's really inspiring, again, to a lot of people just starting out. I know probably to you now, it's, I mean, now it's 2024, you probably don't feel like you're just starting out. But for for someone like me that's been doing this for almost 25 right. years, you're definitely in the more the beginning of your career. No, totally. Like I'm just about to get five years and- right. Right. This is January, which is crazy. Right. I mean, it feels it feels like I've been doing it for forever, but it's like, wow, that's really in hindsight a short period. Right. A short all. period of time. Right. And you right. are, you're just in sort of you're in the beginning, which is amazing mm-hmm. because there's so much incredible stuff to come in your future. But I that's also so why I think it's really, really inspiring. And again, one of the reasons I wanted you to share that. I mean, there's so much right. you can do if you're if you're, you know, just starting out, um, or again, making a career change or up-leveling your career. So anyway, okay, so that's what you're doing. You're seeing people in person. 
um, doing nutrition coaching as well as doing the chiropractic work. Mm -hmm. You're also, you also have programs online, which is yep. amazing. And one thing that we've talked about, uh, we talked a little bit about how, you know, you've had your own journey with hormones, mm -hmm. with skin issues. And a lot of that, I, th I think again, from my memory, from conversations and from, uh, chatting with you is that a lot of that is, was part of your, you know, passion for, this field. You obviously Definitely. just talked about your back pain and that was part of your passion and part mm -hmm. of the impetus to go to chiropractic school. But um, I know that you've had other hormone issues and, and skin mm -hmm. issues. So I want to specifically, because I know there's so many different directions we could go in with this conversation, I but I want to talk to you specifically today about the gut skin connection, because I know I get a lot of questions about that. And I know a lot of our coaches get questions about mm -hmm. that for from their clients. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. So let's start with um, let's start with something with gut health in general. Do you what do you how do you feel about stool tests? What's your favorite mm. stool test? Do you use stool tests often? Always? Never? Thoughts on that? Yes, I do really really love stool testing, and I think that we can gauge so much information from from stool tests. And and I'm not talking about the stool tests that you would necessarily get from your conventional practitioner who might just be screening for like. Do you have a, I don't know, I don't find that they're as comprehensive. They're not as um, detailed. They're not, they're not showing the total picture of your microbiome. So, so what one as example, like what, what, what are, what are you saying would not be as comprehensive as an example? Um, gosh, I can't even think of the ones that like um, you'd get from like your typical PCP. I honestly don't even know the names of that, to be honest with you. Okay. But the ones that I use that I like a lot, GI map is great. However, mm -hmm. if you're in New York, like I am, right. Um, Sometimes running the GI map can be challenging. So Vibrant Labs, Vibrant America has the gut zoomer. I actually like that better than the GI map. Mm -hmm. It's very user friendly. It's giving a full breakdown of your microbiome, any obviously overgrowth of pathogens. But it's also what's so cool about that test and what puts it in perspective is it links all the different commensal bacteria and what they might be linked to. So these types of commensal bacteria might be linked to leaky gut. These are linked to your metabolism. These have associations to your hormone. These are have associations to um, SIBO or liver detox. Like it's just cool because people can kind of see, wow, our gut is literally connected to all of these different things. And it's not saying if one is off that you have said condition, but it is showing, hey, if your acromancy is low, you mm -hmm. might be having issues metabolizing, uh, you know, blood sugar properly or mm -hmm. metabolizing carbohydrates right. and having a proper response, which is that's something I see a lot. And so just being able to show people the connection of, hey, your gut is so connected to everything else that you have going on. It really, I think is, is super eye opening, and just being able to see, you know, how your probiotic bacteria is in your gut. Have you been on antibiotics a lot? Do you have yeast overgrowth? It's just, it's incredibly comprehensive. I do always tell people, we can always do work on your gut, whether you get the testing or not, because I like, I get that functional testing. It's a barrier to entry. It's not, it's not cheap. I think it's incredibly worth it. But if people are just starting out, there's still so many things that we can do to prioritize gut health without having that specific testing. So I don't want that to be like a turnoff for people. It's like, oh, well, I can't invest, you know, X, Y, or right. Z. So I'm not even going to get started. I would like, no, 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 you right. can still get started. That will always be there when we can get to it. Right. And some people just don't want to do the test also. Right. Some people right. just don't want to do it. And I do think, and so I think a, a lot of these tests are, and not just the stool test, but all kinds of functional tests. I think a lot of them, you know, it's useful information, right? And okay. information is power and it can be incredibly helpful. I mm -hmm. do also think though that they that there is a lot of over testing going on. And Definitely. that and so and again, not only you already mentioned, it's a it's there's a financial burden there for many people. And you know, why bother if you don't really if you don't need to do it? So I think that there's again, there's over testing which can be difficult 100%. financially, but then also it can lead to just confusion and unnecessary information, especially when you haven't done, you know, what I would call like the low hanging fruit thing. So for example, I mean, and this is just a real basic example, but you have someone that has a lot of uh, bloating, let's say, and they're eating a huge amount of highly processed packaged foods all day. Well, right. let's, let's remove the highly packaged processed foods first, and then let's see how you feel. There may be absolutely no need to do a stool test regardless of you know whether you can afford it or not, right? There exactly. may be no. It's just waste at that point when there's so many things. Exactly, exactly. So I always I always like to think about it like that: like go for the low hanging fruit mm -hmm. first, 
and you know, see what really is the primary issue because yeah. many people are gonna have multiple things going on. What are we going to address for, yeah. first? And sometimes when you address one thing, whether you use a test to address that or not, you are going to probably fix some other things as well. So Absolutely. it's sort of like go slow, figure out like where, what you want to fix first and then see if there is a need for a test. So I just wanted to mention that because I do I'm think that's it. Yeah, I think sometimes people get overwhelmed by all of the testing. And I again, did. it can just lead to a lot of confusion and Definitely. some unnecessary information. The other thing, and again, I am I agree with you. I am a fan of stool tests when used at the right time and place. Mm -hmm. I also, and the information can be so powerful. Yeah. Um, I just, I also know though that it seems to me uh, and I'm curious what you think here, that there's still so much work to be done with these tests, that they're still yeah. in their infancy and that they're going to absolutely be improving and that there probably is so much more, or there isn't probably, there is so much more going on with our guts that we don't even see in these exactly. tests yet. So I, I that's just another thing to consider. Absolutely. And I am glad that you brought that up because I, I literally was just saying that the other day in a call that I tend to be a lot more conservative. Like if people are wanting to come to me and if they want to get something run, I'm going to run it. But it's, I'm almost never saying, Hey, in order to work with me, we have to get X, 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 you know, all these tests. Yeah. There's so much, like you said, foundational work, low hanging fruit. And even if they're like, I'm not doing any processed foods, are you stressed? Because why are we right. going to There's so many different things to look, at. to look at your cortisol when you know that it's exactly you have a big circadian rhythm. Like that's absolutely. Of money. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So I totally agree. So when you do use a stool test though, yep. let's say, what are the, and that's why I wanted to start with stool tests because I do, I'm, I'm curious about what, because we, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about gut and skin health. Mm -hmm. What are the most common things that you see in stool tests that make, that I guess make sense that this person is having, whether it be acne or, you know, oily skin or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. their issue. So on a stool test, I'm always looking for the comp, uh, the gut and the, the permeability or the integrity of your gut lining, right? Is right. there any type of inflammation there? Um, is there any type of like intestinal permeability, leaky gut, mm -hmm. or for lack of better words? Because obviously that's going to make your skin more inflamed, whether that's ac acne, eczema. Mm -hmm. We can look at certain keystone species of bacteria. Acromantia is a big one, especially for eczema. I see ac low acromantia mm. in a lot of eczema and dermatitis cases. Mm. Um I see a lot of strep overgrowth and staph overgrowth with acne, especially cystic acne, along with, you know, uh, you can, we can see certain types of like protozoa, entamoeba, histolytica, things like that for kind of like hmm. if people are getting cysts and certain things like that. But especially if there's like a lot of overgrowth or more high opportunistic bacteria, that's a, a good indicator that that's likely showing up on the skin and that's what your body's amounting that kind of immune response to. Sometimes we can see, you know, if there's types of gluten sensitivities, um, I will say I'm definitely not as much of a fan of food testing. If I were to put that on any kind of list, I'd say that's always at the bottom because if you're sensitive to certain foods, we got to look at why your gut is sensitive in the first place, what inflammation is going on. Mm -hmm. Gluten, obviously, as you know, is probably a, is a big trigger for a lot of people or mm -hmm. if your gut is inflamed. So we can see that marker with certain sensitivities and it's like, Hey, you know, does this mean you have to limit it forever? No, but we do have to work on healing some of that inflammation before we work on adding that back in because your body is clearly not happy when you're having it. So I'd say those are really big ones that I'm looking at, mm -hmm. especially with skin. I work with a lot of acne. I work with a lot of, you know, post-birth control or people who think it's hormonal, but even, even hormones, a lot of that hormonal acne can be more so with your microbiome because it's certain hormonal shifts like around ovulation and before the menstrual cycle, um, our immune system has different responses. And so especially before our menses, our immune system deregulates to obviously make room and kind of put priority towards the bleed. And so with that immune system down regulating, that allows a lot of pathogens to flow throughout your lymphatic system. So especially if you're getting certain skin conditions like your neck, your jawline, you know, we think, oh, it's our hormones. And maybe sometimes it can be, but hormones aren't necessarily root cause. Usually your hormones are just a reaction of something else that's going on in the body. So whether that is, you know, your pathogens floating through your lymphatic system, it could be, you know, if your microbiome is quite not quite uh, in alignment or there's you know, a dysbiotic kind of environment happening that love that can totally impact your estrogen metabolism, which, you know, everyone's going on dim and all everyone's going on these hormone balancing supplements. But I think we're really missing the boat because again, hormones are just responding to 
what they're being told to respond to their chemical messengers. And so we're really missing by looking at your microbiome and, and liver and detoxification. I mean, those mm -hmm. are all how our hormones are processed, but I do think I am seeing, especially so much in practice, like how much the microbiome is playing into all of that. Okay. So let's use, let's pretend you have a, a new client that comes in mm -hmm. that says, oh, I've been breaking out right before my period every month. I'm getting these, this horrible breakouts. What do you do? How, okay, how are so you going to, how are you going to help that person? So first we're going to, I want to find out like what type of breakouts, is it deep? Is it cystic? Is it more superficial? Cause sometimes that can help me determine like, is it more like of a systemic issue versus potentially not where, it, where it is right. Face mapping. Is it more kind of on your cheeks? Maybe it's a right. testosterone thing. So kind of just finding out where that is one, obviously we're going to look at what they're eating. Are they having a lot more cravings before their period that obviously can cause some of that blood sugar dysregulation. So looking at kind of the lifestyle piece, looking at the nutrition piece. Um, are your bowel movements affected during your period? A lot mm -hmm. of people's bowel movements can slow down. If you're not pooping one to three times a day, all of mm -hmm. those things just continue to recirculate. So getting people going to the bathroom regularly is like issue number one. Did you know that there is one phase of sleep that most people fail to get enough of? And this one phase of sleep is responsible for most of your body's daily rejuvenation, repair, energy, and controlling hunger, and even the hormones that affect our weight and so much more. I'm talking about the deep sleep phase. And you probably know by now that sleep deep is a pillar of a nutritious life. So there you have it. It's for good reason. You probably also know that I'm a little sleep obsessed, not with sleeping a lot per se, rather with getting good quality sleep because I've been a not so great sleeper most of my life. And when I sleep well, I feel like I can conquer the world. And when I don't, well, not so much. So why don't most people get enough of this one most important phase of sleep? A big reason is magnesium deficiency. Over 80% of the population is deficient in magnesium and magnesium increases GABA, a neurotransmitter, which encourages relaxation on a cellular level, which is critical for sleep. Magnesium also plays a key role in regulating your body's stress response system. Those with magnesium deficiency usually have higher stress levels, which negatively impact sleep as well. Now, before you go out and buy a magnesium supplement, it's important to understand that most products out there only have one to two forms of magnesium, when the reality is your body needs all seven forms of this essential sleep mineral. That's why I recommend Magnesium Breakthrough. I used to just take magnesium at night, but now I take it at night for relaxation and sleep and in the morning for brain function and stress management. Magnesium Breakthrough contains all seven forms of magnesium designed to help calm your mind and help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. The deep sleep benefits are really noticeable. I track my sleep. You may see me post this on Instagram. And I can tell you, I see and feel the difference. For an exclusive offer, go to buyoptimizers.com forward slash NLCarry and use promo code NLCarry for 10% off any order. I'll also put that in the show notes. Skin stuff like that needs to be an essential. Um, are you more stressed? Are you bloated? Are you having any kind of other digestive stuff that's coming on during this time that your body might need a little bit more support, whether because of hormones or, you know, some of those fluctuations. Um, and then I also like to look at, you know, what is their past history? Have they always had menstrual issues? Do they have heavy bleeding? Do they, um, were they on like a lot of antibiotics and things like that growing up because, or like a big one that I've been asking, especially with the strep thing is like, did you get strep throat a lot when you were younger? Mm -hmm. Cause that infection tends to not always be completely eradicated and, and, and to an extent strep is normal within our microbiome. But again, with a lot of those people, it can be reoccurring. And then right before, you know, at the perfect kind of hormonal times, those, those infections can sometimes impact us a little bit more than others. And so those are kind of the questions and things that I'm thinking about. And sometimes it is as simple as, Hey, you know, we got to balance your blood sugar a little bit better because before your period, you're already a little bit more insulin resistant. So right. sometimes that's a quick fix for some people. Sometimes that's it. Sometimes right. it's literally just getting them to go to the bathroom regularly because you would not believe, and I'm sure, you know, obviously, but how many people don't think it's, or don't think, see an issue with not going to the bathroom every day. They go to the bathroom every other day, every two days, every three days. Right. And they're not uncomfy. So they don't realize that it's a problem, but 
I mean, that's a, oh gosh, that's a huge, right. such a huge, huge thing. And right. so, so many of kind of, like you said, low hanging fruits, really simple things, things that can be impacted from your lifestyle. Do we need to add more fiber? Do we need to add a little bit more sleep or stress management or magnesium? Simple, simple things. And then obviously if those things aren't working, okay, we might need to take a deeper look or we need to potentially like look into some detoxification support, or we need to make sure that, you know, your body's eliminating everything properly and the immune system is fighting. If there's any chronic kind of underlying bacteria or infections that could be there that could keep coming up month after month for you. Right. And you're bringing up such a good point. I think a lot of people think, you know, oh, I get, I, I break out before I start my period and, you know, but it's been happening forever and I eat fine, but they don't realize that you eat okay, but you're not necessarily really eating for optimal blood sugar balance. And so it might be okay in the sense that maybe you haven't gained weight and you've mm -hmm. maintained your body weight for a long time and your energy's okay. And so, and you're kind of used to your energy being that mm -hmm. way, but you don't realize that it's actually not optimal blood sugar uh, management. And so, like you said, it could be something like that, that, mm -hmm. that, that comes up though around getting their period. It, it, it does come out, even though they've got to get away with it the most of the month, it comes exactly. out in, in, you know, a breakout and they might not be connecting those dots. So I'm glad you brought that up. And then also the, the, uh, going to the bathroom, the concept the, the bowel movements is, is a huge one too, because I think if you have someone, you know, a, a woman, especially mid twenties, Oh, I've been going to the bathroom every other day for 10 years. They, they're not going to connect the dots that right. that's why that may be the reason why they're breaking out before their period. So exactly great points. And I love, um, yeah, that you, you kind of, you take a step back and look at, and look at it from that perspective. Uh, okay. So let's do, let's look at another example of someone that's having real, let's say a male that's mm -hmm. having real cystic acne, you know, like ob obviously let's say you're going, there's, you're going to take a look at their diet. You're going to take a look at their stress. You're going to take a look mm -hmm. at their sleep and all of those things, but let's just say person's doing everything right. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what, where, where do you, where do you go next? Mm. I mean, so well, this, funny, with this, I was going to, I was going to say, this is probably then when you would do a stool test, right? Potentially. Um, you know, it could be in, in a lot of men, we're seeing like lower testosterone, higher estrogen in some cases. So like, especially it depends on, it's, I think where I would go depending on like other symptoms, like if they're having like weight loss resistance or, um, you know, belly fat that they just feel like they can't lose no matter what they do. It's like, okay, you know, maybe we do maybe want to look at what might be going on hormonally here or, depending if their symptoms also are like, you know, I'm super bloated or I don't have bowel movements that are formed or I constantly feel like I'm hungry no matter what I eat. I mean, definitely then I would be looking, I think, cause it's so hard to just say just with acne, it's like, where would you go? It's like, wow, right. there could be so many things, but I think depending on whatever else is going on, especially, you know, with cystic acne, just in general, I always want to look at what's going on in the stool because usually that it, might fluctuate during hormonal times for women. Men might just have it all the time. Um, it's usually something kind of underlying. Is there an overgrowth? Is there like a higher pathogen bacteria or virus that's kind of, because like cysts, whether it's ovarian cysts or cystic acne, it's your body trying to like wall something off. It's kind of like your body's way of protecting you. And mm. so for me, I want to see what is causing that. And then there is some cases where like I've noticed really great success with parasite cleansing with people who have ovarian cysts or hi like a history of cystic acne. I mean, that was one of the huge catalysts for me that started to kind of move the needle in the right direction. I always thought it was a hormonal thing and I think it was, but I, again, I think it was a hormonal fluctuations causing the gut stuff to really kind of recirculate. And so for some people they do that and they're like, wow, this was so perfective. Some people it scratches the surface, but again, there's, there's a lot of layers to a lot of these different things. And so that can, for some people, get the ball moving. And for me, I don't need to see that in a stool test because generally they're not going to come back in a stool test. So if it's not like, you know, going on antibiotics for strep throat, like you want to make sure, although that people go on antibiotics nowadays for viruses, and I don't know why that's a thing, uh, but you know, it's not that type of situation where it's like, Hey, we don't need to for sure. Like a lot of these herbs are very synergistic. They're working to rebalance your microbiome. They're working on just other things other than just specific parasites and eggs. So they do kind of help to create a synergistic, uh, environment in your microbiome. And so for, for that person, I'd probably say before we even do any testing, I just want you to start here. And I just want to see what you notice with this. Okay. Wait. And so start here, start, start where, what would you start with? Start with, um, 
opening up your drainage pathways, pooping every day, and then work into a potential parasite and like a parasite cleanse or a parasite some cleanse. for parasites. Okay. Yeah. okay. Too many people hop into parasite cleansing. Like, you know, there's so many cleanses that people can get online right. or whatever, which I, I think some of them are wonderful and great, but so many people aren't sweating. They're not moving their lymph. They are sitting all day. They don't have regular bowel movements. And then they wonder why they aren't getting results from said cleanse, whether it's a parasite cleanse or any type of detox, because you can't detox and or do anything if you aren't eliminating waste on a daily basis, whether that is through your bowels, ideally through sweat, through lymphatic movement, through breath work, all of these different lifestyle things that are free, but just maybe need a little bit more emphasis. And need to be done consistently. Exactly. I think sometimes people might do a sauna when they're at a spa once a year, but they don't, right. they're not necessarily doing real deep sweating uh, consistently. Right. So, exactly. And I, even if you don't have a sauna, I mean, I tell people get in a really hot Epsom salt bath. You can sweat yeah. very productively, but people are like, oh, I don't want to. I'm like, well, we got to find some way for you to sweat because not sweating is not a flex. It's a good thing to sweat. Right. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So parasite cleansing, it is. Mm -hmm a very hot topic these days, yes. I'd say on social media for sure. And again, like stool testing, like most of these things, there is a time and a place. And I do think parasite cleansing in general has been, is being overdone by many, by, by a lot of people. And, you know, it's just like, Ooh, I want to do that cleanse. I want to, I'm going to do something extreme. It's like, you know, like people always want to do something extreme to get some Definitely. big fast result that they think they're going to get. So mm -hmm. you just gave us an example of a time and place mm -hmm. when a parasite mm -hmm. cleanse may be needed. Um, mm -hmm. I want to hear what would you have, what would you hope the result to be in that case? And then maybe one is an example of when like you wouldn't bother doing a parasite cleanse, even if someone wanted to. So you know, it's sort of two questions back to back there. <laughs> okay. So what would you expect? So, I mean, I've seen people's acne and skin really, really come down in terms of inflammation within a few weeks. So I'm not saying it's going to be you know, fist, a face filled with cysts to like nothing. Obviously there's going to be some redness and scarring, but we should see like a decrease in acne. I mean, significantly probably within like a month to two, especially with like some of that drainage and detox work that I was just talking about. I mean, that's a, that in itself gets the ball moving for a lot of people because you're helping your body get rid of stuff that mm -hmm. it's really struggling to process on its own. Um, so I guess I have a few different thoughts. One is I think it's so common practice to parasite cleanse in so many other countries, but for some reason here in America, it's like nobody should do it. But how many people travel to other countries and go to other cultures? And so wait for everyone out there that might not have heard about, because not everyone yeah. has, for, right. has absolutely heard of one. So tell, tell us, you know, from your perspective, what exactly is a parasite cleanse and again, what you hope someone will, will gain from doing one, because I do think there are some people, I don't want to, mm -hmm. I don't want to just assume that everyone knows what it is. For sure. So, um, the parasite cleansing that I do, it's just herbal capsules or herbal tinctures that, um, you know, have lots of different, um, usually like things like black walnut or clove and just kind of some like natural compounds that help to tackle certain parasites in the body. And so parasites we've evolved with their, their normal and, um, natural in our environment. The problem is our bodies have, we are either more stressed. We don't have our natural protection mechanisms. Say our, we maybe have more low stomach acid that that's a really natural defense against parasites that some people lose. I mean, think about how many people you probably know who've been on, you know, uh, an antacid, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, six to 12 months to, to years, right? Like that weakens your natural defense of, of stomach acid. And so I mean, parasites are everywhere. They're in your grass. I walk around barefoot all the time. Um, I don't always wash my produce. I know I should. And like, those are, those are ways that like, sometimes we can come into contact with these things. And obviously we know that they're in fish and things like that. So if you eat sushi, I mean, I don't kind of have this fear narrative around parasites because I mean, I know that we like, we've evolved to an extent with some of these things, but I also can understand when they can become an issue for certain people or when their body might not be handling uh, their load or might not be able to protect them as, as, as efficiently as maybe it should. And so that's always kind of my goal is not only, okay, let's teach you what it is. Let's show you how to do it, but then let's also kind of boost your stomach acid. Let's boost your natural response so that you're not just right. feeling like you need to do this every two seconds, because that's not 
Well, also, I think people need to know that they hear parasite. And they think, oh, I have a parasite. And it's like we all have parasites. We all have. I don't think I don't think people understand that. It's like we all have. We all have, we all have bad bacteria in our gut too. We have good yeah. bacteria and bad bacteria. We all have it's bad bacteria. All exactly. We just wanna, it's the same thing with the bad bacteria. We have strep. We have C. Diff, right. We have all these things in our microbiome. It's just we just want them to all be controlled because when they can become a little bit too much for are kind of out of that normal range, that's kind of when they can start to cause a problem. Maybe you, you know, are noticing a lot of teeth grinding or jaw clenching. That's one of the biggest ones. Anal itching is big, especially around a full moon, skin issues, or your skin flaring around a full moon, bloating or um, constipation and diarrhea, both can be symptoms, which I know is confusing, but some people are more prone to one than another. And so, um, you know, it's, I mean, I have a dog and we deworm animals, but then she licks me on the face and she sleeps in our bed. And so it's like, you know, it's very like it's it's you can see from all these things, not even just traveling to different countries, how we can kind of be in contact with some of these things. And again, not from a fear perspective or anything. It's it's normal. Um, it's just how can we protect and boost our digestion and, so that we can be right. protected from these things? And then maybe um, if symptoms are there or if we feel that our body might not be running as efficiently as we'd like, how can we go about rebalancing things right. in a pretty low and uh, low maintenance and, and more natural way. Okay. So you have this person, like I was giving the example, male, cystic acne, doing all the right things. You say, you know what, let's do a parasite cleanse because this person, for example, maybe they're out of balance and mm -hmm. they're not, their body is not defending themselves against the parasite. So it is out of whack. They need to go on a cleanse. You put them on this parasite cleanse, which you mentioned is a, some kind of, you know, herbal tincture or, mm -hmm. or herbal pills. How long would that last? Um, what would that person feel like, right? What you said, you could see that inflammation, you can see that acne go down, but, you know, give it, walk us through sort of what would happen there. So for the first month before anyone drain or for before anyone cleanses, I like them to just do the drainage stuff, the bowel movement. Sometimes we add, will add like a binder during that time. So to just kind of capture toxins, get your body kind of used to taking um, the binder that I use is like fulvic and humic acid base. There's other ones. I mean, there's zeolite and charcoal. I just tend to not like those as much because uh, you have to take them on an empty stomach. Sometimes they can strip your minerals. So the, the fulvic and humic can be taken with food and it, it's remineralizing. Some people that's enough where they are detoxing themselves mm -hmm. with that because it's, you know, it's potent enough that it does support detox. And sometimes, sometimes whenever you detox, it's always, there's always a risk that your symptoms might get a little bit worse before they get better. I mean, that's always, always a risk. I mean, the first time I parasite cleansed, I had never had dermatitis in my life. And I had a little perioral dermatitis rash that came about, but I don't know if my drainage was like, I don't think I was sweating quite enough. Maybe my bowel movements weren't enough, but also I just have struggles with detoxification for a long time. And so I know that I needed to probably put a little bit heavier emphasis on a lot of the lifestyle stuff. Mm -hmm. And then from as long as you're tolerating that, then you can work into about four ish weeks on kind of like a, that herbal protocol, see how things feel, and then just kind of take a break after that and see, see where your body feels. Obviously, depending on your load and your symptoms, you're going to notice different things, but and not saying that one month is kind of going to be the key or it's going to get everything if you're super, super overgrown on a lot of stuff, but it definitely can start to move the needle and it should, you should notice, you know, reduction in maybe cravings if that was a symptom or you know, definitely less lessening and bloating is one that I notice a lot or um, people who maybe struggled with regular bowel movements now are noticing a lot more full and productive bowel movements, probably because a lot of the drainage work that we've also implemented. But as you kind of get rid of some of these things that are creating that GI imbalance, it does allow that gut motility to work a lot more efficiently. So again, some people, I, there's no such thing as a magic cure. There's some people though, that they really find that that is, wow, that really helped me to just really move the needle in the direction I was looking. Some people are like, you know, I really like the way I felt, but I know that there's more work to be done, or I know that that wasn't my sole root cause. Because usually, it there's a lot more things. It's not just one thing. And right, I think a lot of people look at parasite cleansing and they're like, this is going to help me lose weight. This is going to help me fix my digestion forever. Right. It is sometimes just not that simple. There's a lot of moving. Yeah, I would say it's probably never that simple, right? <laughs> there might be a few people where it's like. There's one girl that I actually worked with. It's like, I could not figure out her act. I could not figure it out. And I was like, let's just try this. Her skin cleared beautifully. And then she actually was so healthy that she got pregnant right after parasite cleansing. And she, I was like, oh my gosh, you were literally our unicorn. Um, wow. Wow. Well, it's not usually that. It's not always that simple. You right. Know, that was one out of how many.
And then so after, obviously, then you want it, you want them to build up their the strength of their gut. You want yep. them to have a healthy gut. You want them to have obviously have a healthy diet. If they yep. were having highly packaged processed foods, for example, getting rid of that, getting rid of That's sugar, right. things like that to, to uh, uh, because otherwise you're just going to go back to some you exactly. know old habits, right? Yep. So what do you feel like after a parasite cleanse? Let's say someone's acne does clear up. They're mm -hmm. eating healthy foods. You know, what types of specific foods? Because I know the foods that I think about in terms mm -hmm. of good skin health, but what types of foods are you recommending? And then also what type of, what types of supplements are you recommending mm -hmm. to keep the gut healthy and spe to specifically um, keep that acne at bay? Mm -hmm. um, food wise, I love fermented foods, especially if right. there's not Me an too. overgrowth. Like, yeah. I'm such a fan of sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, um, I, apple cider vinegar. I'm just I, the most, I love those foods so much and I get that they're an acquired taste. Um, but I also believe that you totally can teach your palate to enjoy oh, yeah. those foods. Um, so those, I'd say a little bit of fermented food mm -hmm. at least once a day is huge for yeah. keeping kind of that commensal bacteria, nice and healthy fiber. So I love like basil seeds are my new jam. Um, 15 grams of fiber per two tablespoons. Ooh, basil seeds. Mm -hmm. Case, Dr. Casey Means talks a lot about them. Her book, Good Energy, was phenomenal. And she kind of got me on the kick for those. Basil seeds, flax seeds can be great. Flax is nice too because it's a really easier fiber to, for a lot of people. But then it's also helping to kind of metabolize excessive androgens if that's potentially a cause for acne. Um, it's nice to add into kind of your seed cycling if you're doing that for mm -hmm. hormone stuff. Um, but it's it's a great healthy fat. Um, you know, so those fiber sources, I love cruciferous vegetables too, cause right. it's a great detoxification support, yeah. estrogen metabolism, all the things, glutathione support, Yep. obviously protein, um, because protein is king for balancing that blood sugar, protein, healthy fat. So we, cause blood sugar is always a topic of discussion when we're chatting acne and just skin health in general. I mean, we know that imbalanced blood sugar leads to enhanced glycation, which can make us age faster. Mm -hmm. So whether you're listening to this and you're like, I don't resonate with the acne. Most people don't want to age faster than they need to. So yeah. that blood sugar is obviously a huge component of, component of that. Everyone needs to be doing that. <laughs> everyone. I, everyone. Like, I mean, metabolic and heart diseases yeah. are, yeah. I mean, 80% of people everyone. are not metabolically healthy. So you I mean, to brain that. health for all the right. reasons. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I love bone broth, especially mm -hmm. as we kind of get into fall. I just have a chicken that I baked yesterday that I'm going to use to make homemade bone broth. I mean, that's just, again, it's a gut soother. It's yep. filled with collagen and amino acids. I mean, just so anti-inflammatory. So, I mean, amazing for the skin. I did, I think I did 30 days straight last year and I was like, wow, I need to do this more because I just noticed such a difference in terms of clarity, in terms mm -hmm. of just how my gut feels. So I'm excited to kind of get back into that season a little bit more. And then, oh, and then supplements that I could add, that you could add. So, I mean, if you are like, I really appreciate your recommendation of fermented foods, but I'm just not going to do it. Okay. Then you can add a good quality spore-based probiotic. I'd encourage you to do the fermented foods because you're going to get so many different types of bacteria in terms of the more right. variety that you eat. Um, but I mean, a spore-based probiotics can be especially huge with acne, um, or and just skin health in general. Right. Um, well, and just, I mean, immune health, overall everything. health, overall health, brain health. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, I really like, um, glutathione for, yes. um, a big fan of glutathione. I love glutathione, especially with MTHFR and yeah. like struggling with methylation. That's the methyl B's and the glutathione is yeah. just, it's such a game changer for me, both energetically and just, you know, to help support mm -hmm. your body's detox naturally. And, um, I just tell, you know, such a difference when I take it. Um, let's see in terms of other kind of maintenance support, um, so maybe some magnesium support. I mean, I think that everyone should be on magnesium, yeah. but especially yeah. to help with some of that bowel motility and, and just de-stress. Like for a lot of people, right. um, stress can be such a contributor for that acne. So we want to make sure they're sleeping, that they're detoxing. Um, those I'd say are like very staple kind of, I think a, a lot of people could. And then depending on if they're struggling with certain things or if they're a little bit more stressed, maybe we'll do more adaptogens or mm -hmm. They are, oh, um, in terms of digestion health, maybe we work in some digestive enzymes or hydrochloric acid to just right. maybe even just for one meal a day. If they're like, you know, I'm feeling kind of loaded after dinner. Okay, let's just work in some digestive support or do some digestive bitters, apple cider vinegar with at least one meal a day to just keep your digestion nice and strong. Or, hey, if you're going to eat sushi, take some digestive enzymes or strengthen that stomach acid before you eat it just to kind of really help strengthen that. So, um, 
that those I'd say are really kind of across the board, pretty good and uh, balanced recommendations, depending on what they're struggling with. Anything else about the gut skin connection that you want to share or anything you're mm-hmm. excited about or that you've been seeing a lot with your clients? Um, the eczema stuff with some of like the acromancy up. Are you familiar with pendulum labs? I don't know if I, uh, yeah, I asked you about that. Their yeah. metabolic daily and their acromancia species have been so huge with dermatitis and eczema. I mean, it's amazing what bringing this species up, but what's really cool too is, so acromancy is like a keystone. And so like red pigmented foods, mm-hmm. so beets, um, radish, you know, any type of like apples or red pigmented food, sa- red sauerkraut, red cabbage really kind of also can help to support that species as well. So even just like getting people to eat those mm-hmm. foods and get that species back in, I mean, right. just that, I, that's been the one thing that I've changed in some of those skin conditions. And they're like, oh my gosh. I'm it's not- interesting. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh no, you're good. You're <laughs> no, good. I, I was, was just, just going to say, cause people, acromancy, I feel like is absolutely having its 15 minutes of fame, it I is. think as it relates to GLP-1, it but I, I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of as much of that connection to mm-hmm. dermatitis and eczema. So mm-hmm. super it's interesting. actually interesting. I'm doing actually, I'm part of a study with them right now. They're doing, they're studying acromancy and GLP-1 and for athletes. And mm. so I've been taking just like noticing how my recovery is with my workouts mm. and my activity. And and I will say, I I, ha- I feel like it has kind of helped a little bit with recovery. Obviously, that's very anecdotal and like we're in the very early right. stages. Right, 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 right. Hypothesizing that, but that's also kind of interesting, like how your gut can impact your exercise yeah. performance and recovery as well. So that's kind of cool. And something hopefully I can share a little bit more about soon, depending on what I notice at the end of this trial. Yeah, no, that makes that makes sense. Uh, this was so helpful, informative. I love chatting with you. Um, one last question for you. Mm-hmm. I know there's lots of things you do on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. I know we've talked a lot about our different daily habits, uh, mm-hmm. but I want to know what is the one thing you do on a daily basis that ignites your nutritious life, that gets your whole nutritious life in motion. Hmm. I would say it's first thing in the morning, warm filtered water with lemon juice and minerals because Mm -hmm. the lemon juice is like kickstarting my digestion for the whole entire day. I'm getting kind of those digestive juices flowing. I'm getting my bowels flowing. And then I just pair it with a little bit of breath work. And I feel like when I do that, it just sets the entire motion for the rest of the day. It's such a simple thing, like warm lemon water. That's it. Love it. But I mean, sometimes I'll add some apple cider vinegar if I get fancy, but I really feel like that sets me up for the whole day. Like you're getting everything kickstarted. You're moving your bowel movements. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Eat a nutritious breakfast. I always say that water with lemon in the morning too, there's a psychological benefit to it. It's like you're saying to yourself, it's a little like little love note to yourself saying, I'm going to have a healthy day today. Right. I it's know, just it's like this, like, it's like there's that morning. psychological benefit there. So I love that. You're amazing. I'm going to put in the show notes where everyone can find you. Go check out Dr. Haley Schaff. Um, you are amazing. And yeah, I can't I can't wait to chat more with you. And thank you so much for being on our show. Yeah, likewise. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs>